a year into this pandemic, people are tired of their staycations and ready for a vacation. This travel agency right here in Norman is booking flights left and right. So I took it to social media to see what some Oklahomans think. This room is going to be filled with OU students and faculty ready to get their COVID-19 vaccine. This local coffee shop here in Norman opened right before the pandemic hit in 2020. Now they're thankful for one thing that helped them survive their first year opening. This drive through right here. To shop, you can come down to their OKC location or shop online at locallatherok.com. Lauren Johnson, OU Nightly. Epic's faculty and staff will continue to do what they think is best for the students through this pandemic. Lauren Johnson, OU Nightly. A year into this pandemic, people are tired of their staycations and ready for a vacation. This travel agency right here in Norman is booking flights left and right. Michelle's Destinations Travel Agency tells me as vaccines are being administered, airline tickets becoming cheaper, extra stimulus money coming in, they're noticing some Oklahomans are ready to get out of their houses fast. I am seeing those last minute trips really, really starting to, I need to go away Friday. I need to go away tomorrow. What have you got? And I'm seeing destinations that we have always sold, but we're getting more interest in. But that doesn't mean there's not concerns. They have a lot of questions, and that's why we spend a lot of time with our clients to make sure that those questions are answered. So some of the questions have been uh, about the delay in passports, which is a concern. Um, uh, other questions have been, well, what happens when we get there? Is something going to happen? How do we schedule the appointment for the return back to the States? And all of those things, we walk through them with the clients. So I took it to social media to see what some Oklahomans think. Some show concern, but 73% of those that participated say they are ready to travel. One says they got tested for COVID after their trip and said, even in the midst of the pandemic, we need to live and enjoy life. Of course, with extra caution, but go have fun and travel. Others say they are waiting to travel for a few more months to give the opportunity for everyone to be vaccinated. Shelly Ramirez at Michelle's Destination says she's comfortable with traveling and answering any questions for those that want to get away. I've been traveling through the entire pandemic except for like two months. So I feel confident in when I talk to people and kind of put them at ease. Traveling a year into the pandemic is becoming more popular. If you plan on vacationing, make sure you still take precautions. Lauren Johnson, OU Nightly. Thanks, Dayton. A Texas man was arrested outside of Vice President Kamala Harris's house in D.C. last night and now is facing weapons and ammunition charges. Police say he had an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle and over 100 rounds of unregistered ammo in his vehicle. The U.S. Secret Service detained the man out, out of suspicion and police came to the scene. A Secret Service official says none of their protectees were in the house at the time of the incident. The FBI has been looking through footage for months, searching for suspects, and today they released new footage from inside the Capitol riots. This new video shows police being assaulted during the riots on January 6th and images of new suspects. The body cam footage shows rioters assault, assaulting police with metal poles, stolen shields, and stolen chemical sprays. The FBI is hoping that this footage will help identify the new suspects. President Biden is laying his groundwork on raising taxes for wealthier Americans. Biden plans to raise taxes for Americans that make more than $400,000 yearly. The White House administration says Americans making less won't be seeing any additional taxes. Biden says he's a firm believer of Americans doing their part and sees that wealthier Americans aren't doing enough when it comes to taxes. A New York man is found guilty for keeping live sandbar sharks in his pool in an attempt to sell them. This man is now facing fines for illegal possessions, and the sharks are now in a New York aquarium. Emma, back to you. Thanks, Emma. The Senate is now negotiating changes to the large COVID-19 relief package that passed the House last week. This bill has not been released yet, but it's expected to change in a few ways. For one thing, a new cutoff for who gets the $1,400 stimulus check. Families making more than $160,000 a year or single people making more than $80,000 a year would get reduced amount. Once Senate passes this bill, it will go back to the House and then it will be on the president's desk. Some states are trying to pass new bills to change elections and voting access after the 2020 election. Now, the Democratic-led House approved a new bill to counter those Republican efforts. 
This new bill is said to expand voting access and improve accountability and transparency, transparency in Washington. However, Republicans argue that it limits political speech. And parts of New Zealand is, be is being evacuated and heading to higher ground. There has been a few large earthquakes with the largest at a magnitude of 8.1, sparking a fear of a tsunami. These earthquakes have triggered a tsunami watch for Hawaii as well. New Zealand's emergency management is encouraging citizens to evacuate immediately, and Michaela Smith will have more information on why this is such a big deal later in weather. The winter storm left Texans without power for days, and now the CEO in charge of over overseeing the state's power grid has been fired. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Emma. Democrats say that they are on track of passing the newest stimulus bill on time. The $1,400 stimulus checks have been a controversial topic between parties. Republicans say it's too much, but Democrats are optimistic that they will get the bill on Biden's desk before the unemployment benefits run out mid-March. The House is expected to have a vote as soon as tomorrow. Then it will go to the Senate. Arizona Republican lawmakers are trying to create a bill that allows them to review election votes if needed. Republicans say it provides a way to audit the election to review or investigate the votes. This bill came to light after the accusations of fraud in the 2020 election. Democrats do not see the point of having the election if legislature could essentially override the results. If this amendment would pass, it would go to a Senate or statewide vote in November of 2022. Marjorie Taylor Greene is getting a major backlash after posting an anti-trans sign outside of her door. Greene's sign said there's only two genders and is located right across the hall from Representative Marie Newman, who has a trans transgender daughter. This sign was in response to Representative Newman putting out a flag in support of the LGBTQ community. What I wanted her to do was see the LGBTQ community and understand that equality is way overdue. Representative Newman says she made her statement by having Green see the flag every day. It was never meant to be a game. She just wanted to show her support. Back to you guys at the desk. I'm Mecca Thompson. This is an OU TV News Brief. Today until 8 p.m. OU is hosting a large vaccine clinic located at the Armory delivering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. OU Health Services and the Health Sciences Center plan to administer 3,000 doses. Students who have not been vaccinated are highly encouraged to schedule an appointment. Speaking of vaccinations, Oklahoma's COVID numbers are on a steady decline. There are approximately 11,000 active cases in the state. Per the CDC, around 7,700 Oklahomans have died from COVID-19. Today in Washington, D.C., President Biden has condemned the new Georgia law. Last night, Republicans signed to strengthen voting restrictions and are now being criticized. Biden described the new limitations as outrageous and un-American. This has been an OU TV News Brief. I'm Mecca Thompson. Be sure to watch OU Nightly tonight at 930 and weekdays live at 430. Good night. I'm Ashley Vandevelde, and this is an OU TV Sports Brief. The OU baseball team is back after a stellar win over number one Arkansas on Tuesday. The Sooners are at home at 6.30 p.m. where they will face off against Houston. The action continues as OU and Houston play Saturday at 2 p.m. and Sunday at noon. The OU women's gymnastics team looks to stay undefeated as it heads into the Big 12 championship in Morgantown. The Sooners beat Iowa State last Sunday in Ames. The ladies are live on Saturday at 1 p.m. against Denver, West Virginia, and Iowa State. And OU basketball takes on Missouri tomorrow at 6.25 p.m. in the first round of the men's NCAA tournament. The Sooners will be without guard Davion Harmon due to his recent positive COVID-19 test. The winner of the matchup will face Gonzaga or Norfolk State. This was an OU TV Sports Brief. I'm Ashley Vandevelde. Be sure to watch OU Nightly tonight at 9.30 and weekdays at 4.30. Good night. My name is Peyton Gallion. This is an OU TV weather brief. It has been a beautiful day across the state of Oklahoma and you can see that temperatures 
well across the state are 15 to 20 degrees warmer than we were yesterday. And I don't know about you, but I am loving these warmer temperatures. Even going into tonight, a high here, a low here in Norman of 52, we will be well above average. But Guymon up in the northwestern panhandle will be in the 30s. Even tomorrow, another beautiful day across the state. 72 degrees here in Norman, warmer out eastward and a bit cooler out westward and to help plan for your beautiful day tomorrow we will start out a bit chilly but warming up as we go throughout the day we will be windy at times and there is a slight chance of rain going into tomorrow night these showers can be scattered and strong at times so keep that in mind as you plan your day as for the rest of your week in norman once these showers um, make their way out of the state tomorrow. The sunshine returns for the rest of your week. High temperatures in the 60s well across the week. Windy on Monday and Wednesday. And we will dip back down into colder temperatures for the rest of the week. This has been an OU TV weather brief. Be sure to tune into OU Nightly tonight at 930 and weekdays live at 430.